It's crunch time here on The Jump. ESPN's Tim McMahon reports Mavs coach Rick Carlisle said Kristaps Porzingis was, quote, full go at practice today. So, Vince, how much of a boost do you expect the Mavericks to get when Porzingis comes back? It's a huge boost for the team. Another score, another go-to guy that they can feature. And you can put him in any position uh, in the lineup and have success. And I think that'll open the floor up for Luka to dominate even more if that's even possible. But it's going to open up some scoring for some of the other guys as well. It's obviously huge just in terms of raw talent. I think Luka and KP fit together really well. We're ahead of schedule in that regard last year. The biggest question for Dallas long term, honestly, is can KP stay healthy? If he can, this team can contend for championships for a long time. Yeah, I worked on that Christmas Day broadcast with the game between the Mavericks and Lakers, and Rick Carlisle told us that Kristaps Porzingis was trying to play in that game. So he has been very eager to get back on the court. Certainly a great sign he was ready to go and practice today. All right, guys, Master P and Baron Davis reportedly in talks to buy Reebok for $2.4 billion. Zach, do you think NBA uh, players... Did you say million? <laughs> billion. <laughs> uh, attracted back to Reebok with Master P and Baron Davis running the show. Baron Davis running the show. What do you think? I hope so. I mean, those two guys are really cool. They're really popular and more power to them. All I'm saying is make the Reebok pump a thing again. I don't even care if it works or not. Just make the Reebok <laughs> pump a thing again thing. Yes. and then we're off and running. Yes, I say I say, hey, uh, I mean, it's it's it, they're big names. They're going to bring in a lot of guys and I say utilize your history of Reebok. Bring Allen Iverson back. Feature him. Right. I mean, a lot of guys looked up to him. Bring his shoe back and bring back the pump and Bring, you, while you're doing it, bring D. Brown back with it. <laughs> I'm never going to argue with yeah, more Allen right. Iverson. So, there you go. All right, guys, uh, yeah. let's switch gears here because it was a tough scene for the Grizzlies last night. John Morant injuring his ankle after falling on a Nets defender in the second quarter. This was, this was just hard to watch. I mean, he, he hopped off the court. He was mm. writhing on the ground. We're still awaiting his MRI results. Now, Ja did tweet after the game, quote, every setback is a setup for a comeback. God wants to bring you out better than you were before. And he thanked people who sent their support. Vince, we don't know a timeline for him just yet, but how do you think the Grizzlies will do if they have an extended absence from Ja? Because Jaron Jackson Jr. is still not back either. Well, I'll say this, first of all. Uh, I mean, you, you have to think about the injury and, and looking at it. He jumps really high. And he was super high on that. So it's the impact for him, as opposed to some other players right. who don't jump quite as high, it's a little different. So mm -hmm. it, it just makes it look, ugh. But I tell you, you know, if you see how, look how high he is. I mean, ugh. so that's a long way down when you're not expecting it. Ugh. So, uh, but the team in, in general, they did a great job of just holding, fort, holding the fort against Brooklyn. Yes, I know they're two superstars out there, but Brooklyn Nets are still very, very capable. It's still a playoff team. We're a playoff team without Durant and, and Kyrie, but... Uh, it's it your team doesn't go without a guy an impact player like John Morant so you know, for, for them you want him back you wish him a speedy recovery but but you want your superstar back at full bore a hundred percent so I, I encourage him and I hope the organization uh, they don't rush him back you want him to get come back and to be the John Morant that you you know and love him to be and has no hesitation so they can move forward and they'll make up ground because of how good they are and how good he is. Well, I can tell you this. They're not going to rush John Morant back. That's not how this regime operates under Zach Kleiman. They've taken the long view of everything. They're not getting irrationally exuberant because they almost made the playoffs last year. They're not hell-bent on chasing it. They're being cautious with their two young stars because they're playing the long game. That said, look, the margin for error or injury in the West is zero. Three weeks, that could be your season. Three weeks of your mm -hmm. best player being out while Jaron Jackson Jr. is also out, that could be it. The Kings look frisky. The Spurs look frisky. The Wolves are competing. The Suns, I think, are going to be really good. The top teams are who they are. I mean, they're just, unless lots of other teams absorb injuries or other things that take people out of the lineup, your margin for a John Morant absence is very, very small before the season slips away. So fingers absolutely crossed that this is a short absence, but the Grizzlies are not going to rush it back. They're going to be smart. Yeah, and nice. look, Rookie of the Year last year, obviously one of the most exciting young players in the league, so his long-term health is the most important. But you're right about the margin for error, Zach. Not only is the West so loaded, 
it's only 72 games this year. So one of 72 is more valuable than one of 82. It just matters. So depending on how much time he misses, it really could impact them significantly. All right, let's go to our league pass game of the night. Producer's choice here, Raptors at 76ers. That's 7 p.m. Eastern. The Raptors looking to get their first win of the season tonight. Joel Embiid expected to play after sitting out the Sixers last game when they, of course, lost to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're feisty too, Zach, the Cleveland Cavaliers 3-0. But Zach, what are your expectations for Embiid tonight? Well, he'll never say it because Joel Embiid will not give anyone else credit, but I bet he's breathing a little sigh of relief that Marcus Gasol doesn't play with the Raptors anymore. But what I'm <laughs> looking for is Joe's post-passing has been a little hit or miss over the years. He's been turnover prone in the past. I think he's gotten better at it. And you know the Raptors under Nick Nurse are going to throw all kinds of crazy help schemes at him to try and confuse him, cloud his judgment, make the passing lanes unclear. And I'm very, that's what I'll be watching. I'm interested to see how Joel responds to that. Can he have seven assists and two turnovers, six assists and two turnovers instead of three assists and five turnovers? That's what I'll be watching. Uh, for me, I think he's licking his chops, you know, obviously to get back to get his team back in the uh, in, in the winning position. Uh, you know, playoffs for them, they have a great chance in the playoffs. And I think, like you said, <laughs> no Ibaka, no Gasol. But at the same time, he wants to go out there and dominate and play well to get that bad taste out of the mouth for all the times that those two bigs have caused him hell, in, 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 you know, in the post. But he's going to go out there and, and play well, I think, and dominate. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.